In Chapter 5 of One Piece, Zoro officially accepted Luffy's offer to join the crew. And in only two years, this partnership would lead him to become two of the strongest fighters in the entire world. But what if Zoro rejected Boy. Luffy's offer and never joined the Straw Hat crew? How far would Luffy get on his journey? And before we jump into the changes this would make to the story, let's actually take a quick look at the moment that inspired this whole video when Luffy first invited Zoro to join the crew. Now at this point, Zoro was tied to a post for saving this little girl here from these bad doggos. Now, Luffy then invited him to become the very first crew member. And you might not remember it, but Zoro initially refused. However, then when Luffy recovered his swords and then freed the green moss head from his robes, he finally agreed to join the crew. But obviously for this video, let's assume that Zoro actually rejects Luffy a second time, slapping away his invitation like a follow request from a creepy stranger. And if this were the case, Luffy would leave Zoro tied up with which would lead to him actually being executed by the Marines. But honestly, another much more likely scenario here is that Luffy would of course still set Zoro free because he does know deep down that Zoro is a good guy. And so after defeating the Marines, Zoro would thank Luffy, but then simply walk away and pursue his dream of becoming the world's strongest swordsman on his own. And this will have massive consequences in almost every part of the story, because as we will see throughout this video, whenever Luffy is on his own, he usually finds a way to almost gets him killed. I mean, wow, how's this guy even gonna become king of the pirates anyways? But now without Zoro, let's start with Wano Country. Wait, what? Why are we starting so late in the story, you ask? Since the point of this video is to see how far the Straw Hats would get without Zoro, it made sense for me to start at the end and work our way backwards. So we'll be examining each of Zoro's important moments in the story and then seeing how things would be different without him because, spoiler alert, the Straw Hats wouldn't have made it that far. And so because we're going in reverse order, there won't be any major storyline changes like in some other what if scenarios. So before we look at all of Zoro's legendaries bad later on, let's start early on in the arc. Because during Wano, he did have some minor fights like against this straw man and in a battle to stop this former Daimyo's execution. But in each of these conflicts, there were other straw heads present who could easily perform the very same role here. And not even counting the battles, his history as a descendant of Wano never really ended up playing a role in the actual story story, so even if he wasn't here during the arc, you could have said that the Straw Hats would just be as motivated to fight Kaido. Which now of course takes us to the climatic battle of Onigashima, and here Zoro was a major participant in the rooftop battle against Big Mom and Kaido, and his presence was definitely felt here. He definitely got in on a few massive attacks and blocked one of the strongest attacks we have seen in the entire story so far, but ultimately this battle was never really decided either way, so did he really make that big of a difference? However, afterwards, we have, of course, his truly epic battle against Kaido's right-hand man and the strongest member of the Beast Pirates, King. And while this was an incredibly high battle, there are other characters nearby who probably could have fought King as well in the worst case. In particular, Marco the Phoenix was not doing much at all during this fight, so he could have been a good match to fight the Flying Dinosaur. Likewise, Luffy could have handled King no problem once he had been done with Kaido, I think. And so even though Zoro's fight was incredibly epic and we saw him awaken his Conqueror's hockey, as disappointing as it may sound, the Straw Hats ultimately probably would have been fine in Wano even without Zoro. But I can promise you that this will not be the case for many of the arcs later on in the story, or I guess earlier on in the story. However, since Zoro wasn't in Whole Cake Island at all, we'll just move on ahead to Zo. And on the back of this giant elephant, Zoro's fighting abilities weren't really needed again. However, he did demonstrate one of his super important roles on the crew, which is his leadership. Because when Sanji left to take care of his family problems, Zoro told the rest of the crew that Sanji better well apologize for his actions. He left the crew at a super important time in the story, plus he was going to stir up trouble with a second emperor. And Zoro's role here is important because he is the only one who will really step up and demand respect for the crew and their captain. And while this tense moment didn't result in any major conflict, yet at least, it was a great reminder for Luffy about the honor and respect needed on the crew. However, even if Zoro wasn't here to give that reminder, I do not think that it would have changed Luffy's actions much in Whole Cake Island anyways. However, that is definitely not the case for 
another important moment coming up in the crew later on. You might know what I'm talking about. But three arcs down and the Straw Hats would have been just fine in each one so far. Interesting. Maybe one day if Zoro's sense of direction really got him lost, the crew might actually just be fine. However, this brings us all the way to Dressrosa, where Zoro fought and defeated this giant stoneman. However, this is another enemy who isn't really all that powerful. I mean, how could he be with a voice, voice like that? Look at that! <laughs> so someone like Law, Sabo, or even Luffy again could have probably defeated Pika almost instantly and just fine if there had been need for it. And so moving back even further, Zoro does have this very nice moment in Punk Hazard where he yells at Luffy that he should finally take things seriously after he almost dies at the hands of this gas man. He reminds Luffy that they are now in the most dangerous part of the world. And of course, Luffy laughs it off, so maybe it wouldn't matter even if Zoro was here to remind his captain not to mess around too much. Zoro also defeated this snowbird lady, but someone else could have easily taken her out as well, if we're being honest. Which is now already bringing us all the way back to the time skip. So as you can see, Zoro's influence in the post time skip arc so far was actually not as important as you might have previously thought. And that's because even though Zoro has a fight in basically every arc after the time skip, the crew is not as challenged like they were pre-time skip, at least not yet. That is already changing as we know. Plus on top of that, everyone else in the crew is now fairly strong as well, so Zoro isn't the only one that's able to fight strong fighters now. But things are going to be very different the further back we go in the story. Now of course Zoro doesn't play any role in the events leading up to Marineford because the Straw Hats aren't here, and even though the Straw Hats were defeated on Saba Odi, Zoro's absent probably wouldn't have really had any major effect on the outcome anyways. And so where it's starting to get really interesting is when we travel back and discuss the Nightmare Island Thrilla Bark, where Zoro has his most badass moment in the entire story, and it's not only Zoro's most badass moment, it's probably the most badass one. In his very first fight of the arc, Zoro defeats his ancestor, which is this zombie swordsman, but I definitely think that Nightmare Luffy could have probably also defeated the samurai. However, the even greater conflict came at the end of the arc when Zoro stood up to the warlord Kuma to save Luffy, and in exchange for Luffy's life, Zoro agreed to take on all of his captain's pain from the previous battle. This of course resulted in the world famous nothing happened scene, which is personally my favorite in the entire story. However, with Zoro not in the crew, it would have probably fallen to Sanji to take on his captain's pain. I mean, Sanji actually wanted to do this anyways, but Zoro knocked him aside. So in this case, Sanji takes on all of the pain, and we seriously have to ask if he would have been able to survive this just like Zoro did. And I mean, I love Sanji as much as the next man, and so please don't hate me if you're more Sanji than Zoro, but I honestly do think that the answer would likely be no. Zoro is shown all throughout the story to have crazy endurance and the ability to fight through pain. And so even even though we've recently learned more about Sanji's incredible body, it was not awakened at that point in the story, so I don't think that he would have been able to survive this crazy hey. amount of damage. And so, apologies Sanji, but it does look like you probably needed your moss-headed friend after all. But since we're now getting to the points in the story where Zoro is absolutely necessary, I do want to add one major disclaimer, because even though there will be a bunch of points where Luffy would fail without Zoro, we can usually find some sort of reasons for the straw Hats to be able to continue. For example, in this situation with Kuma, it is possible that the warlord takes mercy on them because he is friends with Luffy's father, after all. While we can usually find some sort of excuse like that, there are gonna be some arcs that are just impossible to move on from without Zoro, again, very early on in the story. Which now brings us to the government's judicial island, Ennis Lobby. And during this arc, we see one of the three major characteristics that Zoro actually brings to the crew. Two of these we will be discussing in upcoming arcs very soon, but the first characteristic that I want to focus on is that he's just a straight out badass fighter. At this point in the story, he, Luffy, and Sanji are the only three strong ones who can really fight in the crew. No offense to Nami and Robin quite yet, and Chopper does lose his mind when he goes berserk at this point. So Zoro's absence here is a major problem when Luffy is somehow distracted or taken out here because there's just no one left to protect the others. And honestly, if you look back, this situation happens in basically every single arc, but maybe that just means that Luffy would take things more seriously so he doesn't put the rest of the crew in danger. 
but then again, kind of doubt it. So let's keep this in mind as we shift back to Zoro's fight against this sword wielding giraffe. Now Zoro eventually wins this battle and claims the key number five, which is the exact key needed to free Robin from her handcuffs. So without Zoro winning this fight, Robin would have been trapped for good. However, I do think that someone else like Luffy or Sanji could possibly have defeated the giraffe man as well. So in the end, Robin might still somehow go free even without Zoro if he really wanted to. However, moving back to Water 7, we get another critical example of how without Zoro's presence as the unofficial vice captain, the crew would surely been falling apart. So you will remember that the crew reached Water 7 in need of a new ship. This of course sparks the fierce duel between Usopp and Luffy, which results in Usopp leaving the crew for a while. And this is an incredibly important moment for the crew's long-term future. That's because if Luffy gave into Usopp's demands, it would have shown the crew that Luffy is not a strong leader and captain and is not really worthy of their loyalty. However, in another really famous scene in chapter 333, Zoro will not let Luffy take the easy route and he reminds Luffy that making these difficult choices are gonna be the burden of being the captain. And so without Zoro in this moment, Luffy may very well have chosen to keep Usopp's friendship rather than do what was best for the crew. And if Luffy let Usopp rejoin the crew right away or agreed to keep using their ship, it would probably have had disastrous consequences later on in the story. For example, if they did keep using the Mary, it could have sunk in the middle of the ocean without anywhere to escape to. Or if Luffy didn't earn the respect of the crew in this scene, they may not always listen to his orders later on. And so this lack of respect and leadership could eventually lead to a tragic breakup during some future conflict. And so here we have our first true example of Zoro's importance to the overall stability of the crew. Because I really don't think that anyone else on the crew is as serious and as devoted to respect to have the very same level of impact as vice captain. I mean, Sanji is kind of wishy-washy, Usopp has his moments, but is too weak physically, and Nami would rather avoid these kinds of serious issues within the crew. And besides his fighting and his leadership qualities, there is an even more important third characteristic that no one else on the crew possesses. Because out of all the straw hats, Zoro is the one most single-mindedly focused on his goal to become the world's greatest swordsman. And out of all other straw hats, it is probably the pretty much easiest goal to understand. Probably sounds a little bit something like this in Zoro's mind. Step one, get stronger. Step two, defeat enemies. Step three, question mark, four, profit. Simple, right? But Zoro is also the only one that we consistently see training to actually reach his goals. He's frequently lifting ultra heavy weights or practicing his sword skills. And I do like to think that this has some effect on the crew as well. And so we do have to wonder if losing Zoro would make the crew less dedicated towards their own goals. I think Luffy at least would of course still want to become Pirate King, but as you'll see in just a moment, Zoro was truly irreplaceable in the early parts of the story. Also, if Zoro's not there to butt heads with Sanji, then the cook's pervertedness might have reached even more ridiculous heights. And who knows, Nami could even kill Sanji herself if he peeps in on her bath one too many times. But now on to Skypiea, where Zoro plays a key role in the outcome of the arc. His major action here was when he defeated the winged puppy lover. And while there was no one else around to really take this guy out, I can imagine Luffy defeating him pretty easily once he got out of the snake. And after this one, none of the surviving characters can actually defeat the lightning god Enel, so Zoro basically takes a nap until he helps cut down the giant beanstalk. As a result, without Zoro, it is possible that the beanstalk never gets cut down, which means that Luffy would have never reached Enel in time to deliver the final blow. But I do think that between this warrior's dedication and Nami's cleverness, they would have probably been able to find some way to get Luffy to Enel, but again, maybe not. Which now brings us to Alabasta and the juicy bits of this video. Now, Zoro's main role in this arc is to take down the warlord Crocodile's right-hand man, Mr. One. And originally, this was a huge moment of growth for Zoro as he finally learned how to cut steel. Kind of crazy actually that he couldn't even do that up until that point in the story because we've really gotten used to it. However, with Zoro out of the picture, someone else will need to step up to this insane blade man from tearing through the crew. Certainly, I think Luffy could eventually figure out a way to beat Mr. One, even though Luffy and Sharp Things don't really get along that well, especially at that point in the story. But Luffy already had his hands full with Crocodile, so someone else would have needed to take out Mr. One or at least distract Croc Man or Mom while Luffy takes 
out Mr. Blades. And I do think that their best chance is a combination of Sanji and Nami, where Sanji could keep Mr. One busy while Nami figures out how to strike him with lightning. But honestly, it sounds kind of questionable. And I do think this is a serious candidate for a place where the Straw Hats might fail without Zoro. But that's not the only critical role that Zoro plays here. He's also part of the team that helps Vivi reach the bomb. And so without Zoro there to fling Chopper and Vivi into the sky, they would have had to come up with another plan to reach the top. I mean, perhaps Usopp could quickly make some sort of giant slingshot or another option is that the marine captain smoker could help by using his smoke logia powers to get them up there to the bomb but again with no Zoro there things look very dark and you might fairly enough be asking why would smoker out of all people be willing to help them here but I don't think that a marine captain would stand just around if he knew that millions would be able to die from a giant bomb plus these are desperate times without our favorite swordsman so we've gotta get a little bit creative here to get the straw hats past this hurdle and so after Luffy defeats Crocodile, the Straw Hats get their next major bounties. And without Zoro to take much of the credit, the rest of the Straw Hats probably will get a pretty decent bump in each of their bounties, which is great news for Sanji, Usopp, and maybe even Chopper finally gets some of the respect that he deserves here. But Nami is certainly not pleased with this turn of events. So as punishment, she demands that you will subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content just like this. But now let's jump out of the desert and continue moving backwards even more into even more critical territory here. Certainly, the Straw Hats would be just fine in Little Garden and Drum Island since Zoro basically just got stuck in wax and then decided to have a little wintertime workout in the snow. However, that brings us to the booze lover's favorite island, Whiskey Peak. Because here, the Straw Hats were tricked into passing out drunk and then the entire island tried to capture them to earn their bouncy money. However, Zoro was sober enough to fight all of them off until Luffy and the other were waking up. And so while Zoro did do a lot of work here, none of these enemies were super powerful, so maybe Luffy and the others would have eventually gotten free no matter what, but again, maybe not. Might be hard to believe, but over 900 chapters in reverse, and we've only had one real moment so far where Zoro's absence could have led to an eventual breakup and failure of the crew, and a few others that required fairly creative solutions for the crew to advance. However, no absolute crushing defeats yet, and so next up is the East Blue the weakest of all the seas, and so it should be a walk in the park for the Straw Hats, right? Right? Well, let's just see how they can survive our long park. Here, the Straw Hats will again be missing Zoro's fierce loyalty to the crew, because in chapter 71, Zoro confronts Nami in front of this gang of fishermen. And here, Nami is still pretending that she doesn't care about the crew, but Zoro does not believe her, like, at all. In fact, to prove that she still belongs with the crew, he throws himself into the water. Now, this forces Nami to choose to let him drown or save him herself. Now, of course, Nami does end up saving him, proving to both Zoro and Nami that she very much cares about the crew and Luffy. And so without Zoro here, this entire arc could play out completely different. Nami may not be as convinced about her true feelings for the Straw Hats, or at least it may take way longer for her to finally break down and accept help. But beyond the emotional stakes, Zoro also played a significant role in the fights in Arlong Park. Because because even though he was still severely injured from his early battles with Mihawk, more on that very soon, no worries, he fought off this sword-wielding octopus and even kept the fishman's captain Arlong busy when Luffy was trapped underwater. In other words, without Zoro, someone else like Sanji would have needed to step in to fight Arlong until Luffy was rescued, and this presents all types of major problems and challenges, since Sanji was the one who ended up having to break the rock that Luffy was trapped in. So either someone else would have to keep Arlong busy, Sorry, Usopp, I guess. Or someone else would have needed to free Luffy, but I truly don't know who else would have been strong enough to do that here. And so once again, this is our first clear example where Luffy would have very easily died if Zoro would have never joined. And so it's really a stretch of the imagination to say that Sanji does fight off Arlong long enough for Luffy to be freed by Usopp, who then heroically blasts the rock of Luffy's legs with a cannon. And so with Luffy free, he can then defeat Arlong and rescue Nami's village for good, but uh, that's a real big stretch here. So maybe another narrow escape, but the same cannot be said of Baratie, where there is literally nothing that the Straw Hats can do on their own to survive. But let's not get 
get ahead of ourselves here because first it is possible that they will never find Sanji's floating restaurant at all because in chapter 42 the Straw Hat's new ship is attacked by everyone's favorite bounty hunter Johnny and Yosaku. Luffy is ready to kick them off the ship but then Zoro recognizes Johnny and they quickly become friends and get directions to the Baratie. However if Zoro was not on board Luffy might have just thrown them overboard and this could lead to them never finding a Baratie so with no Zoro probably no Sanji. However let's say there are some possibilities that could still lead them to Sanji. For example, Luffy might still want to recruit one of these bounty hunting bros since he still needs strong fighters, or even if he doesn't, they could still hear about the Baratie from someone else on another island. So let's just assume that they end up finding the Baratie somehow, where they 100% will be completely annihilated without Zoro. Here, after destroying part of the restaurant, Luffy is forced to work as a chore boy to pay off the damage. That is, until this pirate Commodore eventually shows up and starts shooting up the place. And Zoro's role in this fight is basically zero, however, when the world's strongest swordsman Mihawk makes his appearance, things completely change. You see, originally Mihawk came to the Baratie intent on taking down this very same pirate who was now attacking the restaurant. And after Mihawk easily cuts their giant ship in half, Zoro steps up to challenge the warlords. And even though Zoro is utterly defeated here, Mihawk is so impressed by Zoro's honor as a swordsman and his loyalty to Luffy that he does decide to leave everyone else alone. And this scene perfectly shows off something only Zoro can bring to the crew. He is fiercely honorable. While Luffy, Nami and Usopp will use every trick in the book to defeat an enemy, Zoro will face an opponent head on in an honor Honorable duo. He's also intensely loyal to the crew, so much so that he places Luffy's dreams and life ahead of his own. And it is these very traits that so inspire Mihawk to let everyone else live. And so without Zoro in the crew, there is no telling what Mihawk might have been doing to the Straw Hats. Would he still be satisfied just taking this guy's head? Maybe. Or would he probably not want to continue to eliminate all of the other pirates at the restaurant? And if Mihawk were to come after Luffy, then our robber man has absolutely no chance whatsoever against the world's strongest swordsman at this point. So the Straw Hats fate would very entirely be out of their hands. Again, stretching things really far, let's maybe say that Mihawk is feeling generous or maybe the head chef Zeph convinces him to spare Luffy because he still needs to work off his debt. Or maybe, just be honest, this introvert might just want to return to his dark castle. But without Zoro, this would definitely be a time that the Straw Hats could have been easily wiped out. And that is even more true in the arc before this one, Serb Village. So let's back up to chapter 23, with Luffy, Zoro, and Nami sailing to Usopp's home island. And now that Nami is steering the ship, the risk of death at sea is basically zero, so the trio travels to Serb Village, where they meet the boy who cried wolf, Usopp. And Zoro's role in this arc is minimal until the final battle, where he fights these felon brothers. And at this point in the fight, Luffy was hypnotized and asleep, so unless Nami woke him up, they would all have been in serious trouble. So it is entirely possible that the crew is taken out completely because Luffy was tricked into a situation where he cannot help himself or the crew. <laughs> Wow, I mean, these guys really need Zoro. But of course, we could imagine that somehow they make it out alive again. Maybe Luffy just never gets put to sleep or that Nami is able to wake him up earlier. Maybe Usopp shoots him with some smelling salts. Speaking of which, wow, these things are powerful. But with this one, I really don't think that they would have been able to survive at all. I mean, without Zoro, Luffy is literally the only strong fighter. So once again, the Straw Hat journey here is at its end without Zoro. But we can even take it another step back to Orange Town and see how Luffy would do in the very first arc without Zoro. It's in this small village that Luffy first meets Nami, and since Zoro isn't even on the island yet, Luffy is still captured by Buggy the Clown, so Luffy is locked in a cage and he is about to be blasted by Buggy's special cannonballs. However, in chapter 11, he is saved when Zoro fights off Buggy and then flips the cannon away from Luffy. Zoro then carries Luffy's cage away from Buggy and into the town. And so with no Zoro there, Luffy is completely helpless. Nami already tried to save him, but she was no match against Buggy's crew. So unless Luffy was able to somehow chew his way out of this cage, his pirate adventure is over after just a single island without Zoro. 
Oof, so uh, now you know why we did it in reverse. But while Luffy's journey without Zoro is basically over after just a single island, that means that the other Straw Hats never get to pursue their dreams as part of the crew. And this brings us to an even more interesting question, because what would have happened to everyone else in the story, including Zoro, if Luffy had never been born at all? And if you want to watch that video, you can do so right here. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next one.